Today, I'm going to show you how to create some cool dashboards to show off your, your work that you've done so far. So this is a blank uh, sort of dashboard that I just created quickly. Uh, we're going to make this actually a little bit more extensive. <clears throat> but you can see I have different areas. We have chart A, B, and C. We have a little about section here, and I have multiple pages. And I have a title here called Untitled. We're going to fix all that as we go. But I want to show you this is the basic layout. We're going to throw some graphs in here. We're going to put some uh, data in there to be able to download. And I'm going to show you the process on how to do that with the simple tool called Flex Dashboard. So that being said, let's go back to our R, create a fresh new project, file, new project. You don't have to create a new project. I just want to start from scratch for anybody that's jumping in right now. Um, so we want to create it in a new directory, most likely, and a new project here. We're going to call this our Flex Dashboard Project, whatever you want to call it. But we're going to create new so that we can all start off on the same page. And I'm going to go fairly quickly because I want to get right to it. I think once you see the results, you're going to be amazed and say, you know what, I, I can use this. I don't need Excel anymore, you know, things like that. So we have our project. Now, what you want to do is probably, first of all, install a couple of things here. So let's go to Packages, Install, and type in Flex Dashboard. Flex Dashboard, and you see it pops up. It's in the CRAN library. Install that. I already have it installed, but I'll click the button again. and uh, You get a couple warnings. No big deal. Another thing to download is probably this thing called DT, Data Table, if you don't already have that. Install that. That's going to allow us to create some um, tables that have some functionality like filtering and search and capabilities like that. Um, any more than that, I will uh, walk you through as we as we need them. So, okay, we have our our project open. Let's go to File, New File, and if you didn't download Flex Dashboard or install it like I just did, you're not going to have this option. So when you go to File New, go to R Markdown, so it seems like a normal markdown, until you get down to this From Template menu. Click on that, and you'll see I have an option here called Flex Dashboard. We're going to use that one. So click on Flex Dashboard and hit OK. And again, if you don't have that there, make sure you did the Packages Install Flex Dashboard. All right, so we come up here and we have a template layout. Now I showed you this this file right here. Let's close. I'm going to close this one and I'm going to show you um, how this one works. It's already pre-filled out with some examples. Um, so before we can actually use this, we have to save it. So let's just do a quick save. File save. There we go. File save, and we'll just call this our uh, I don't know report dashboard. Whatever you want to call it. Report dashboard, it's under my flex dashboard project directory, so it's there. Cool, we saved it. Now, let's run this thing. And by run it, I mean let's render this into an HTML file so we can use it like a dashboard. So right out of the box, without doing any coding, we're going to go down here to the console, and we're going to type in um, our markdown, colon, colon, render, and then we'll put in our flex if I hit the uh, tab button, it'll auto-populate. I don't want that. No, 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 no. This is called report dashboard. I'm sorry. I'm getting all mixed up here. So in quotes, report dashboard dot RMD. So we're going to run that just like this. So R markdown, colon, colon, render, report dashboard. And it says output created. Cool, that was simple. Let's click on our files over here. And then we're going to click on report dashboard.html. You should have an HTML file now because we just rendered, we knitted this into an HTML. So we're going to click on view in web browser. And I'll pull that over so you can see it. I have it multiple screens. So this is what we just created with without doing anything. This is out of the box. So we have our layout here. Chart A, chart B, chart C. We have an untitled here. Let's leave this open if you'd like. You don't have to close it. Let's go back to our our markdown and I'll show you a couple things that we can tweak right off the bat. For example, this title untitled, let's call that our our uh, our TPS report. So and I'm going to I'm going to hit save a lot, command S just to make sure I, I capture everything. And let's scroll down a little bit and kind of see and dissect what we're seeing here. On line 13, we have column, and it says data width equals 650. What can you imagine that is? Well, it's a column here, and it looks like 650 out of 1,000 uh, pixels or whatever unit of measure it is. But it's basically 2 thirds of the page is chart A, and then chart B and C are on the right-hand side. So let's just 
keep that in mind as we go down here. So 650 for that column. And then you see I have these three hashtags in chart A. So it's third indentation or a third header called chart A. We saw A was on the left-hand side. And now we go down and it says column and it says data width 350. 350 plus 650 is 1,000. So basically break up your screen into uh, units uh, where a thousand covers uh, the whole horizontal span and that's what you get now you see here uh, that column underneath the right hand column which is the smaller one the 350 I have chart B and chart C both with three hashtags right so the fact that I have another column so from column to column that's one whole column and then this column to the end is the other column but you notice that there's two charts in this column column or chart B and chart C right so that's just how it works. Now we can fiddle with these numbers. You can make these numbers um, split evenly. Uh, you could do 500 and 500. And let's save that and render this again. Remember to render, you can uh, type in all that or just hit the up arrow and you'll get to your last command that you ran. So hit that. Let's go back over here and refresh it. And what do we have? We have a split, split. And you can add more columns if you'd like. Uh, it doesn't have to be that. We could do uh, 500. Let's do 250 on this one. And then let's go ahead and copy this, for lines 22 and 23, and we'll go ahead and paste it down here. And we now have another column with nothing there. Let's go ahead and copy the chart stuff just so we can uh, have something to look at. And I paste it in there. I'm going to call that chart D. And now let's see what we have. Control S, come back down here, hit the up arrow, and run it again. Let's go back and refresh. You see I added another chart D that spans the entire vertical distance. Pretty cool. And by the way, our TPS report is now called TPS report and not untitled. So that's pretty nice too. I'm going to show you a couple more things now that we're here. This is just the layout situation um, for now. So now I want to show you how to add another page. So there's a couple things here that I'd like to show you. Instead of these dashes, which you have to have the right amount of dashes, and it has to say column here, and then you'll create a column, but you can also do it a different way. Instead of calling it column, I can I can just do two hashtags and call it column and delete this. I just want to show you that they both work. If I hit Command S on that, we run it. And this is important because I, I kind of don't like the dashes because you really have to keep track of how many dashes you have. So there we go. So nothing changed, and that's exactly what I wanted to show you. So instead of the dashes, you can do the two hashtags and then put the column in there and then the data width. Um, there's also, so this orientation up here at the very top where it says columns, you can also do it in row layout. So we're dealing with columns that are uh, going left and right, right and left. And the rows, it would you'd be dictating the height of each row. And every time you split a row up, it'll split it into columns. So instead, our columns are being split into rows. It's, uh, we, we can play around with it. I'll show you where to find different layouts, too, in just a moment. But I wanted to show you that we can do that. But there's one other thing we can do. We can also do pages. So let's take a quick look at it one more time. You see how we have TPS report and we have all these charts? Let's add a whole other page as if it's a whole other uh, section here. So to do that, let's first start with um, a page right here. And what we're going to do, just as you would probably guess, is one hashtag. And we're going to call it page one, or we'll call it um, uh, start page. We'll call it the start page. I'm going to hit com Command S on that. And let's go down to the very bottom and let's go ahead and create another page so you really get a feel for what this is doing. We're going to do um, expert, whatever you want to call it, expert page. And then we can do a column. We can say column. Um, and we can set the data width and all that by doing the curly braces. Data width equals 500. And let's just run with this and say, test right there, command S, let's go run it. I got this microphone in my way, so I have to keep looking around it. <laughs> all right, output is created. Let's go back and hit the refresh button, boom. Ah, all right, so this page still looks the same, but as you see up here, I have a start page and an expert page. And on the expert page, I have nothing on there except for a test. Now, because there's only one column, it spans the whole thing. What we have to do is add another column if we wanted to actually see it let's do let's do it this way and then we'll do another test two command s and of course you're gonna have to play around with these quite a bit 
because not everything is going to be as intuitive as you think, and you're going to mess up a little bit. Well, okay, so it did work. I have test on the left-hand side and test on the right-hand side. And we'll expand more on that in just a few. But mostly what I want to do is I want to populate these now with certain things. So this was the beginning intro level of how to create a Flex dashboard. 